And you have a cup of tea too, Mrs. Jackson. Don't worry whether your provisions will arrive from the market. There's a Morris commercial vehicle delivering goods somewhere at every tick of the clock. And you, Ken, keep your head down and recharge yourself with sleep for tonight. While you're sleeping, the truck has been unloaded. And now it's being checked and serviced in readiness for another long journey tonight. These men know that adequate servicing is vital to haulage work. When you drive out from the depot tonight, everything from the chassis upwards will have been thoroughly examined. Before an apprentice begins his training, it's part of my job as supervisor to take the boys round the factory so that they'll know how their work will fit in with the general scheme of things. Now here, for example, is the test bed for diesel engines. For the first 40 minutes, the engine is motored gently and then it's adjusted for idling. Finally, it runs at maximum governed revs. We record the results of these tests on a special graph so that at a glance, we can see the detailed performance of every engine. That's a useful history of a future reference. <laughs> Maybe some of this is beyond you, Johnny, today, but soon, when you started your training, all this information will fall into place. Along this assembly line, the Morris one-ton delivery van is being built. Every component is as thoroughly pre-tested as the engines we've just seen. For both in local delivery and long-distance carriage, the van will have to stand up to a lot of hard work. There's the pressed steel frame, which is the basis of its great carrying capacity. The two factors govern the overall design of this van. To give maximum loading capacity and to keep operational and maintenance costs to a minimum. Now these one ton and 30 hundredweight chassis are offered with a choice of engines. Either the compact overhead valve for cylinder petrol engine, or the new 2.2 litre diesel engine which combines the liveliness of a petrol engine with the economy of an oil. Either engine makes this Morris van thrifty to run. And later, when the wheels are on, one of our inspectors tests the steering to make sure that it's getting its full play. Meanwhile, the body of the van is being assembled too. Into this has gone the same thought, care and attention to modern requirements. A smart appearance is an unpaid advertisement for the business owner. And the interior design ensures 235 cubic feet capacity for the one ton and 275 cubic feet for the 30 hundredweight vehicle. It's simple to modify the van for special requirements by the fitting of racks or trays. And the flush fitting sliding doors on the cab permit loading or unloading quickly and safely in the streets. And while Johnny is watching, others are working. Men like Mr. Jackson, who also started here as an apprentice. And just as the son will benefit from his father's experience, so the new Morris vehicles are benefiting from the great experience gained in a quarter of a century of building Morris trucks and vans. Body styles and performances have made vast changes. The only thing that hasn't changed is the Morris insistence on quality and dependability. From assembly lines to complete vehicles. Here in the dispatch department, in orderly lines, are rows of Morris commercial trucks and vans. Most of these are for export and are awaiting shipping space to take them overseas. Here, Johnny can see the full range of Morris commercial vehicles, including the massive seven-tonners with their superb diesel engines, and the latest light range of J2 types. Together, they cover every angle of transport requirement. Our day has now advanced to the time when Eileen must take the flowers to the reception rooms. No trouble at all for the flowers. There's plenty of room in the van for them. But the staff is a different problem. They must use the minibus. Here again, there's really no trouble because although there are only two or three extra assistants, this bus with its overhead valve engine is as economical to run as a family car. Actually, this latest Morris commercial bus is an extremely handy little vehicle. 
Seating 10 passengers with its single rear door, it proved very useful later in the day carrying guests to and from the reception. Everywhere you go, you find other members of the Morris commercial family hard at work. They're a tough lot, these commercials. Here's a five-ton tipper hard at work. It has a capacity of five cubic yards, hydraulically operated. The spacious cab is made of welded steel and is immensely strong. Other features are a rear axle of the fully floating type and differential assembly and driving shafts, which can be dismantled without removing the rear axle. In every detail, this new tipper is powered for performance and built for economy. Meanwhile, the florist's van and the minibus are making light work of the traffic. In delivery work, quicker deliveries mean less cost and therefore more profit. Its maneuverability in traffic is important, as is the matter of parking. The turning circle of this van is only 36 feet, which allows the driver to maneuver with ease and confidence in the busiest streets or loading yards. There'll be no long trek from the van to the reception rooms for Eile. The small space is vacant outside and the van backs easily into it. The goods are easily accessible too, for these rear doors, when required, can be made to fold flat against the sides of the body. Down at the transport depot, huge crates are now being loaded onto Ken's lorry in readiness for another all-night journey. When Eileen and Johnny and Mr. Jackson have finished their day, Ken will be just starting to transport this load to a destination several hundreds of miles away. And from other ends of Britain, similar trucks will be setting out on similar journeys. These trucks running with unfailing punctuality are a reflection of the design and workmanship built into them. Only the finest and strongest can survive and maintain the tight schedule of the nightly haul. 